Well, sometimes it almost makes more sense to talk about things that have happened in like a metaphysical sense of like that I've just been jumping around on timelines. So that metaphysical theory is that you create your own reality and that kind of includes um, other people in the sense that I create a version of my cats and I create a version of my boyfriend and I create a version of um, a vacation and a realtor and stuff like that. Well, even just besides what's been going on for the last few weeks or month, with cats and travel and Asheville and Florida and two different trips uh, there, um, just taking, well, I could even start on Friday night, returning on the plane Friday night, um, fully feeling with a signed contract, um, fully feeling like I did my next move was going to be to a house on a lake with a pool in, um, Mount Dora, Florida. And, um, I had already received word that that boyfriend was going to show up the next well, I thought the next morning, it was actually the next evening. And um, and when he ultimately showed up, um, I told him all about the house that I was going to get and asked him if he had ever water skied. And But then by Sunday morning, afternoon-ish, I was calling people for advice. Me and John had already you know, eaten out together, talked to watched a movie all that kind of stuff, and I, in the talking and, and thinking and the time that went by and reevaluating things and me wondering, how did I get from here to there to there to there? In my thought process, well, today I brought Elwood to the vet, to the emergency vet, because it's Memorial Day today, and is there a connection between Florida and the cats? Yes, there is. Is there a co co connection between a sick cat and Florida? Yes, and um, so that connection goes back to when, well, I put myself on strike for travel after I, I missed a plane and missed a cruise, and then I wasn't traveling, wasn't traveling, and, and uh, had anxiety issues and everything. Then finally got my cats back. Then I was thinking about traveling, but then couldn't quite figure out how to, you know, deal with cats, and, um, but... I've had an issue with, with Elwood, even, you know, in my earlier days with the cats, me, Mark, and the cats. Um, I've had an issue with, well, it was Louie, the great cat, but it was also Elwood that was always peeing outside the litter box. And uh, I, I don't know, I didn't have any reports of that happening when they were not with me for the year and a half. Uh, well, a year is what I would have known, have heard reports about, but, um, but anyway, that, that problem started reoccurring here in this house. And, um, well, so I don't know exactly what came first, the chicken or the egg and all that kind of, but, um, going to Asheville, thinking that I needed to move, initially saying I was going to put my house on the market, then steam cleaning the rug, or, no, it was before that. It was putting the cats in a kennel while I went to Asheville. Then they told me that they saw blood on the first day that Elwood was there. I guess they tried to contact me, and I was in vacation mode, and I wasn't thinking about cats can actually get sick. You know, and you have to pay attention to what's happening to them and when they're not with you. And um, and so, you know, picking them up and it was like they, they were in the kennel for like five or maybe even six. I don't know, because I was all messed up as to how many days it was going to take me to, for, for Asheville. And so they were actually in the, in the kennel longer than they needed to be. But by the time I picked them up, it was like I thought, okay, it was like, okay, they said it happened on day one. Maybe it was because he was adjusting and he didn't want to really go to the bathroom in the cage at first and he was holding it. And so I was like, okay, that is weird. But I had just recently been to the vet 
and everything checked out and I thought should I go to the vet now and and, and what and anyway so I just let some time pass and um, but then I reached a point where I said I, I want to move and so I started cleaning up the house and I had been in my cooking and baking mood and everything was all over the place and I was in my buying mood I was buying everything under the sun um, so I said, okay, I'm going to move, um, I'm going to move to Asheville, and so I started cleaning up the house, and then the last thing that I had to do was uh, steam clean the rug, because by this time, I guess I had figured out that, you know, there was pee, there was, uh, there was pooping being done on the rug by a cat, and there was peeing being done on the rug, and so... In steam cleaning then I saw that it was more than just pee then got I knew it was Elwood I got Elwood to the vet the first time around they gave him an injection of of um, antibiotics but seven days later it was supposed to be for two weeks seven days later I brought him back they put him on stronger antibiotics um, and Anyway, the, re the relationship there is that there was a lot of this pee on the floor, poop on the f downstairs on the rug, and I was trying to kind of keep up with that and get him to the vet and all that, but it's, there was still this thing about um, floors, f flooring, um, and houses, and, and so, I don't know, somewhere in this mix, when I was out in Florida, I knew that I was... I knew that I was much more attracted to the idea of having hardwood or ceramic, ceramic tile floors. And I would, um, you know, see a particular house that had some carpeting, and I would just mentally note that I would need to change out the floors pretty soon in the game. So kind of budgeting that in. And why was I saying that? Well, because I had a cat that pees and poops on the floor. And I'd already, <laughs> I'd already given the cats away once. And, um, and partly, there was partly an irritation factor in it. It was partly, it was a big part. It was, yes, I was grieving, and yes, it seems like they were grieving, and I, you know, had a hard time seeing them. Oh, El <laughs> Let's see. Is that Elwood? Or that? Yeah, that's Elwood. Okay, was he shaved? Oh, and then his leg is green because of a Band-Aid or something. Uh, poor Elwood, so haven't even gotten to that part of the story. He was in the vets for hours and hours and hours and hours today. I was also in, <laughs> I, I also, before I even went to the vet with Elwood, I went to the urgent care for myself. Oh, but that was after having returned from Washington, D.C., dropping John off at Union Station in the early, early morning, and on the way to Union Station, I was, you know, in a hurry. We were both, oh, there's a, and he's, John was like, yeah, get that turbo kicking in, and I said, yeah, I can get you there, and, um, well, I got a ticket, <laughs> and it was almost going to be reckless driving. Now, it's like, and he says, I clocked you at 80. It was like, you know, I mean, the problem is, is like, okay, I, there was hardly any, well, I mean, there was cars on the road, but comparatively speaking, it was like, finally, at least we can drive on these roads because it's a holiday. And so I thought, okay, well, fine. You know, I, normally it doesn't make a difference to pass a car, but um, I was taking advantage of my turbo and I was not driving 80 miles an hour. But if I pass a truck or so, I don't know. Um, so, eh, but I just, oh, whatever. And, um, you know, John was, did the polite thing, too. And anyway, so he ended up um, only giving me a ticket for speeding and not rec reckless driving. I didn't, you know, didn't try to argue the case, but just... <laughs> well, anyway, so, yeah, this is all today, Monday. So yeah, we left the house at, we were targeting leaving the house at 6 a.m. It was probably 6.10. We really had given ourselves enough time because he made it, he made it anyway, even with us having been pulled over. So um, 
you know, that whole thing didn't need to happen. But I guess I put it in my parallel reality. <laughs> it's 2.20 now. And 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. All right, well, it's eight hours or so that's passed. Um, yeah, I've been back and forth to D.C. I've gotten a ticket. I've brought myself to urgent care. I've picked up my prescriptions from the drugstore. Well, I had to do that with two trips, one to drop it off and then later to pick it up because since it was Memorial Day, I didn't really trust the automatic send. And I've gotten Elwood to the vet clinic for hours upon hours upon hours. Um, my gas light came on at some point in time, got gas with Elwood in the car. Um, I had... The last time I used the cat carrier, I had, I don't know, take, taken the cats out from the other side and realized, well, anyway, ended up finding out that I hadn't put that back because when I was driving to the vet, suddenly Elwood was roaming around the car, inside the car, because there was a latch that hadn't been latched. So, you know, I eventually stopped and got him back in. So, um, so anyway, I'm, I'm jumping past the whole vet situation. Um, when I finally got back to the house, I said, okay, well, I need to pick up my prescription, but, um, but Elwood already sat through getting me getting gas and stuff. Let me drop him at home first. Um, and I just left the garage door open. I just went right back out and got my prescription, came home. Um, when I drove back into the driveway, there's Elwood roaming around on the driveway. How did that happen? I put him in the house. I closed the inside door you know, between the garage and the house. Then I closed the garage door. Well, I had, already, I had also put a note on the front door saying, no showings, please, because there's a key to my house, you know, right there in the lockbox out there. Which, you know, was there all weekend long while I had a visitor. There's the, you know, there was a key to the lockbox there. Um, and um, I, I put a note this morning out there because I, the house is, I mean, you know, I just, it's just not in the condition and, and stuff. Um, um, so, um... But so I but I checked, I said, okay, how did the cats get out? Well, I went to the door that's in the bedroom, and that was slightly open. Why was that slightly open? Well, because John wanted to go on a walk last night so that he wouldn't get acid reflux or something. And so, and I don't know, I get paranoid, like I didn't really want to take my key. It's, I don't know, it's a safe neighborhood. And so, but then I, I make sure I unlock multiple doors so that if I just take a quick walk around, then... <laughs> I get back in the house. Well, anyway, um, so, okay, that explains the door being unlocked, I suppose, from last night. But I still don't explain it being open enough for cats to get in and out. Um, plus, I slept in my bedroom last night. I started out. I started out in the guest bedroom. Why was I in the guest bedroom last night and the night before? Well, that's because... I hadn't had time with all these trips and everything to, to get all the cat hair off of my bed. And so, you know, there was a little reaction of like, isn't there another bed available? There's all, you know, cat hair all over the place. Um, so, so, but then halfway through last night, I wasn't feeling good already. And I just had to get back in my comfort zone or something. So I went back in my, my bed, which... I should have noticed if there was a door that was open in there. You know, I woke up there. Okay, kind of got out of the house fast. <sighs> so now I've just fed the cats. Um, I need to give Elwood his first pill now that he's eaten. I need to give me my first pill after I eat, um, which I haven't done yet. Um, and... Um, Oh, and yesterday I ended up sending a text to my realtor saying, I know I've signed a legal document and everything, 
but I can't go through with this. This house on the lake in Florida and everything, I can't go through with this. Um, well, she didn't get back to me yesterday, but she got back to me today while I was at the vet. So I texted her saying, I'm at the vet. It might be a couple of hours. And she, cause she says, I'll sign, I'll send you the release and basically indicating everything should be fine. I hadn't sent any earnest money yet. And I don't think that they were going to kick up a stink. I, it was, you know, I, you know, I got back to them fast, you know, um, so, um, yeah, so even like coming in with, you know, prescriptions and cats roaming and then I'm like, ah, computer, get to the computer so that I can sign the release to release the lake house that I was so in love with just 48 hours ago. Um, and I've got an appointment tomorrow at eight o'clock for Elwood again, the internist, um, yeah, I was spending money on, on urgent care and the prescription for myself and, and I don't know, $620 or something today for Elwood. And, and then he's got, a, well, that came with his prescription and now there's tomorrow and there's, he has to have another, um, ultrasound done by the internist because, uh, Elwood, he doesn't have any kidney snow stones based on an x-ray. He doesn't have an infection based on white blood cells. He um, doesn't have any crystals, which cats can get to explain this massive amount of blood in his urine. Um, and he's massively anemic. So it's happening from another cause. He didn't mention anything, but he says, well, you know, the endocrine system or something. And I said, yeah, uh, cancer causes anemia. Um, he just kind of brushed that off. Um, anyway, they were in love with Elwood. They were totally in love with Elwood. They took pictures of him, wanted to get him on the website. Um, so Elwood may have, you know, something radically wrong like cancer. Um, and, and, it's, and, and somebody posted on my Facebook page, which she really irritates me quite often. Uh, Debbie Downer, basically. Um, Mark had an expression that he used before. Effing blank. <laughs> Effing name her name. Um, just It's like you can just predict it like clockwork, what kind of comment she's going to leave. And basically the comment was, basically I'm causing Elwood his stress and his grief because, you know, I'm traveling and and packing up the house. Well, now I'm so I'm kind of thinking I'm thinking okay, what caused what? Because um there's kind of a relationship between Elwood peeing on the floor with me wanting a ceramic floor and and um and also wanting to do this quickly. In fact, I yeah, I would I want it would I what I was thinking when I had cleaned up the poop all over the rug again and again and steam cleaning the pee again and again, I said, all right, well, I would normally feel like that it's a high priority to keep the house nice and clean and staged and keep all the pictures up. In fact, I've even, you know, hung pictures up on purpose to stage a house or paid somebody to do it. But in this case, I'm demolishing a house. And the reason for that was that I want to get out of this house and I want to get the cats out of this house um, because I think there's an advantage to having this house uh, empty, clean, free of cats, free of cat hair, free of cat pee all over the place. Um, not all over the place. There's a, there's a spot. There is a spot. I tried moving the litter box to that spot and he did start pooping in the litter box at least. And I changed the litter so that there's like little hamster, it almost looks like hamster food or something. The litter, it's like recycled paper tubes or something. Um, or something, I don't like when I keep on saying that. But that's beside the fact. Um, what else happened at the vet? So um, I noticed, boy, these, this is a, like a long process. There's a lot of people waiting in the waiting room for like a long time. And I'm colder than normal because... I'm sick. <laughs> um, I have an antibiotic for, for that. And um, 
So, you know, it was warmer outside, so it was just like a strip mall kind of a place, so I can just go right out in my car, and they, they took my cell phone number anyway, but I thought, this is a little bit weird. I'm not used to just, like, leaving, but I, I checked back a couple times. Anyway, so, but I was out sitting with the windows rolled down in my toasty warm car, and um, looking at the building right there, and then all of a sudden a woman walks out the door, she sits down to the bench and she bursts out crying. Um, and that wasn't the only one of those. Um, just while I was getting ready to leave, they said, oh, just let's set up your appointment for tomorrow over in the other office. So walked over there, set up the appointment for tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning, which I was supposed to have a mover's estimate there. I can't even remember what moving company it was. They are going to do a reminder call, I guess. So I guess I can check my voice messages for that. But um, so when I came back from that office to the office that I had been mostly in, then all of a sudden I hear a woman say, no, no CPR. I said to her, there's a lot happening today. And she says, yep. And then sure enough, I was up there pain and then the vet walked over and said, there won't be a examination, you know, for that one. Um, so yeah, um, two pets, you know, dying in front of my eyes, more or less. Um, and Elwood undiagnosed, but it's not good. Um, I can't, I can't think of anything that would be like, oh, oh, it was just that. Um, that's what Mark used to say to me. Don't, don't worry in advance about things. I would sometimes say, well, all of the easy things were ruled out, you know, so, I don't know, I mean, I think it'd be a little bit normal, you know, to be thinking, for everybody involved, and they were, you know, in fact, even when I was talking to the doctor, he, he says, yeah, I think he needs to be seen by an internist, and he says, something's going on here, and I said, yeah, and anyway, I said something about, yeah, all kinds of things, I said, yeah, I just, I said, I saw a woman come out crying. He, he said, yeah, we had to do a, a euthanization. He says, yeah. Anyway, that was before the no CPR thing. It was a really good doctor, really good vet, really, really good vet. Um, and um, so, um, yeah, I, I mean, I have felt like, I mean, by observation, it's like I'm sort of, let's say, going crazy a little bit lately based on what I've been doing, but there is a correlation, there is a relationship to these things. Um, and um, so the other appointment that I made was for tomorrow. I have an appointment to see a small two-bedroom, two-bath condo in Northern Virginia. And it's located using the same grocery store and Outback Steakhouse and IHOP that I had been going to almost ever since I've lived in Virginia. Um, I mean, basically, I was already in that neighborhood next door, uh, even before those entire strip malls were built. So, um, although that's carpeted, but anyway, I'm jumping here, but what I was, th and in the meantime, I, I mentioned that boyfriend now is suddenly moving from New Jersey to Boston. That happened live. While he was here, I mean, almost simultaneous to the moment that I was realizing 
that maybe I, I'm not ready for Florida or not ready for this particular plan or whatever, and realizing that maybe I have something going on a little bit more secure with boyfriend than I thought, because um, we sort of had a bit of a discussion, and um, it doesn't mean anything for, like, living arrangements or anything, but it was just like, I kind of just thought, well, what does it matter whether I move to who knows where, you know, like, I can't rely on that situation, you know, it's just so unstable, it, it doesn't really do anything positive for my life anyway, because I would need to have somebody more around for things to even, for it to count, so I don't even care, I'm not even letting him know about anything, and I, I, then I, so we had like, like a moment more or less when he was kind of talking things through with me for me to say, well, you know, maybe there is a reason for me to stay in the area. It, it had been hard for me to justify a local move. And that's probably what maybe kicked me off with Florida. But then, um, you know, just day before yesterday or, or yesterday or 12 hours ago or whatever it was, I was saying, um, talking to my, anyway, it was like, yeah, well, a local move does make sense. And I said, you know, if I got myself a little bit closer to the metro, you know, boyfriend uses metro in his area, his local, his metro to um, his, like, bus stop, Union Station, whatever, to my Union Station, and I then have to pick him up, or even if he uses the commuter rail, well, it doesn't go on holidays like today and things. But I said, I said, you know, if I did move back towards where I had lived before, or I could even move closer to the metro line. In fact, I could live so close to the metro line that you could start metroing from your house and walk up to my front door, basically, if I lived in walking distance from the metro. And, you know... He wasn't trying to influence me for anything. He says, well, I mean, that would be, that would be convenient. And that conversation took place maybe only 45 minutes before we went off to do our things. And he ended up having a phone conversation that ended up leading to, and I had, and I had partially heard about the subject matter that he was discussing, but I never made a correlation to, and I don't know if he did at that time to this particular situation for with him th that it would have had anything to do with him moving and so then we we get together again after he said that he was going to you know do this and that and I said yeah I'm going to make some phone calls to like my parents and my other friend and you know try to talk this through about this house in Florida. And he's like, yeah, I've got a couple calls to make and stuff. So then when we regroup again, I'm telling him, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, that's, that, it makes sense now to just stay in the area. But at the same exact time, he's telling me that he's moving to Boston. I was like, I, you know, um, he says, don't worry, you know, we'll see each other. He says, we, I was, we were going to see each other if you were in Florida, which, true, I was planning on moving to Florida, which was a lot further away from, kind of, but, you know, I mean, he added five hours, and he, I don't know. He's still in this mindset that if he can take a bus, he will. Um, but it, I almost liked the idea that when I was going to move to Florida, then he was going to have to, well, not really like the idea, but it was kind of like his trip length would have been the same, but he would have had to be on a plane versus a bus. So I still knew that he, uh, we were pro you know, likely not going to see each other as often because of the difference in the costs and things. So the appointment to see um, a condo tomorrow. Okay, so also then um, somewhere in that time frame, at first I said, okay, I'm all relieved, and I made a decision not to go through with the house in Florida, but then I did a little research and I was then brought back to re the reality of the situation of, oh, right, one of the reasons that I wanted to move to Florida 
was because real estate was so much cheaper and you know I don't have to be in the high priced Northern Virginia area and not work. Um, and all along for these past couple of years, you know, boyfriend has been saying, oh, I think it would be good for you to get a job. And I finally came out and said, I, I, it seems like these, these, finally said, you know, why do you keep saying that? I said, now, you realize the only type of jobs that I can really get now are like back to like, you know, like a grocery store or something, Right. Like, do you know how long I've been out of the work environment? I just can't jump back to being like a tech writer or something. Well, I think, I don't know, he kind of knew that on one hand. and on the, Yeah, he sort of knew that on one hand. A couple years ago, he was insisting that, oh, you know, it's still training. You know, you can retrain yourself. And maybe I've just driven it home now that I don't intend to do that. Um, I, I mean... Uh, I, I mean, there's just a, a realistic aspect to things. And I think he finally caught on to just the overall realistic situation because I've had two years now to prove that I am able to sustain myself, you know, um, as is anyway. Um... um so anyway, I did a little bit of research, and I, I can't even remember. Did we, like, go off again away from each other or something and, and back again together? I don't know. But after I had done this little bit of research, then I started saying to him, I said, okay, now I'm confused again because I thought I had made a decision, and then I started looking at prices, and, you know, I maybe have to get a loan. I maybe have to sell this house first, and I said, and, you know, the, this doing this big change has been problematic as it is, how the two cats are near each other now. Um, I need to give Elwood his pill, I need to cook a TV dinner, and then I need to take my pill. But, um, so I um, was telling him, I said, um, I said, well, you know, I don't think of Mark every day, but there is something to this house, and maybe it's furnishings, you know, I, I don't know. But there's like an umbrella over it of security. There's an aura. Well, it's more than an aura. It's that I've already had two years of proof to prove that what was bought and what was set up, the, the loan that we got, the percentage that Mark got the loan for, and um, you know, the price we paid for this house, and all of that worked based on two years of it having worked. And um, Mark having set it all up, but the utility is still coming on in the name. Well... I even said to, I guess I've already mentioned his name. I even said to John, I said, um, I said, you know, you're just, I mean, you're not in that role. So when I say to you, I have no man right now, um, you know, he didn't, he didn't take that as an insult. He didn't take that in any, it's like I said, it's just that I've suddenly now said, Oh, crap. Um, now I need to be thinking about making a transition within this area and doing it in the same way that Mark had done it with loans and stuff like this. Um, I said, I don't know. Um, I'm, I am a big girl. I have done these things before. Um either totally on my own when I was a single mom and bought a townhouse or I even um, I even was the one that wore the pants in the family in my first marriage and so I did all the financial stuff but um, there is a lingering aspect that just it's, it's still here 
this lingering aspect of Mark having um, taken charge of all that. And in fact, you know, things like missing planes would never have happened with Mark. You know, he would have, uh, you know, calculated the time that I was supposed to leave and, you know, maybe set up a taxi or, or whatever. I mean, you know, there's just certain things that I've, I mean, I don't think that I've, well, whatever you call a mistake in life, I don't know. Um, I don't think I've done too bad, but there have been, you know, some things that I know could have been avoided, um, you know, if if he was, you know, had been around, or if even just the simple fact of two two heads working things out, or um, I mean, the TV would have been on more often, and music would have been playing in the house more often, and even that would have been nice. But it's not playing. It's, my clock is not. In fact, I asked John about helping me set my clock in my car while he was here, and we forgot. But. Um, and of course, I could just say, right now, I'm going to walk out to the garage and I'm going to get out the manual and I'm going to figure out how to set my clock. <laughs> There's like so much to do <laughs> that my clock never got set in my car. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, he, I'm pointing to where he was sitting when we were having that conversation. You know, he. a lot of men do not do a good job with conversations like that. He says, you're, you know, ever since I've known you, you've been really strong and independent. And, and what is this, all this worries and everything? And I said, you know what I wish you could do, though? Even if it's for a split second, just acknowledge that there's some things in life even if it doesn't make sense to you, that is just, you know, I don't know, whatever you call it. And he said, well, I hugged you, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, I hugged you. Oh, yeah, okay, he did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess that was it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and then, then he... No, I also have this stink. Oh my god! Ever since I've been from home from Florida, I've I've had like phase one, phase two, and phase three of like what is in this kitchen and where is it? I've been through my refrigerator. I was, you know, asking. I I, I just I take I've taken out the trash. I just like, and so that's the kind of like well like. Just nobody come in the house today. There's beds not made. There's, you know, um, it just, it's too personal right now today in the house. Um, and, um, oh, did I get to everything? I mean, so anyway, all this, this speeding ticket and, you know, uh, that and, yeah, and everything, like, and the sign off of my house in Florida. And anyway, so, Okay, so then with him moving to Boston, well, even before he was going to, you know, he he have a, you know, he lives someplace now, wherever, you know, wherever he lives, I haven't been allowed to go see it. Um and um so he said, "What are you going to do with all this furniture?" And I said, "I'm going to put it on Craigslist, you know, some of it on Craigslist or something." And and he said, "What are you going to do with this nice big chair?" And and he says, he says, because maybe I, you know, want to buy it off you. And, and um, well, that was another thing that set me off, because he first said that about this chair. You know, he's not a short guy either. He's not as tall as Mark, but um, he likes the chair. He likes Mark's chair. And that was the very first mention he said about furniture, about that chair. And I was like... Well, that's interesting because I was figuring that I was going to be parting with that chair, which was kind of a, it's been a big deal on my mind for the last couple of years. But 
I'm thinking that it's morally wrong <laughs> to part with it in that way. You know? so, um, so he dropped that issue entirely. I, I said, I don't know if that's a good idea. But anyway, so then when he was off doing his own thing, he ended up sitting in recliners downstairs, and he said, what are you going to do with these recliners? And, and um, if it, there was a, a little bit of an aspect that was somewhat pissing me off about that, but you know, at the same time, I was, I was presenting my case of like, I got to, you know, I got to do this and I got to do that. And I got to, and so in some cases he would, you know, you could sort of say that I could have thought of that, that, that as being helpful. And, um, I, you know, and so, and I even said, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to be parting with, I'm definitely going to be parting with those four maroon recliners that were supposed to be part of the movie, thing downstairs that me and Mark were going to do, and we never really did, but we had all these matching recliners, and um, so uh, he had said something about a U-Haul, and I said, well, actually, I have a moving estimate tomorrow, which I'm not going to have. Um, I said, why don't I, um, well, I said this in at two times in two different ways. The first time I said it, I said, why don't I point to the items that you that you want and say, okay, can you give me an estimate for them going to New Jersey? At the time, I thought it was New Jersey. And, um, and I said, and then these other items going to, well, when I first started mentioning it, I probably said Florida because so many things changed in, in like a 12 hour period of time. And so that was like what I probably first said, and these items going to Florida. Well, then the next time we talked about my moving estimate, I had already decided to change plan, made plans, and I said, I said, actually, what I'm going to do with the moving estimate now is I'm going to say, okay, because I, I, what I had said, I had panicked about seeing the prices of the, of the single family homes. So, but I have an appointment on Wednesday to see a two bedroom condo, and I was thinking, well, there's still a reason for thinking of being out in Florida, um, but it, it, I can't do massive single-family home here and massive single-family home there. I've always known that there was an option for condo-condo. Um, so I said, I said, Tim, you know what I think maybe I'll do is I'm going to look at a couple of condos. And then... Because I'm having a hard time parting with some of my furniture, like I, I told him the saga about my round table. You know, the round table. I have a Facebook page named after that table that I bought from the previous owners. Um, and uh, it's called the Mandala, Mandala Round Table. And they, I only saw that when I bought the table from the previous owners. And then I took that off and said, oh, look, there's like a big pattern under there and that's when I've that's the table that I had drawn all my drawings on the round ones and that's a table that wasn't able to fit in the lake house and so yeah the lake house was partially bought because of cats peeing and pooping on the floor because it had complete it wasn't I mean it just when I saw that the every bit of flooring was ceramic tile in that it that was just one of the, you know, features that I thought was good. But then when it came to, like, thinking, what do I have to part with? And I was doing that live with John here, saying, I, I don't know if I can live with that, not having this round table, not taking it. I, I, I don't know think I can do that. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, I canceled the whole house almost over that round table. And um, so I said, if I buy a small condo, in Northern Virginia, then like for instance, the moving estimate, I can say, okay, can you give me an estimate for these pieces of furniture in like a month's time? I mean, well, you know, are, are gonna be going to Northern Virginia. These pieces of furniture are going to be going to, well, apparently Boston now, <laughs> that he wants. And then these pieces of furniture are going to be going in storage and they're going to be kind of waiting around for me to 
settle in on my condo in the area, and then ultimately buy another condo in Florida. So it could be sitting in the storage unit for like a year. Um, and then others, other furniture would still be probably, you know, sold or what, you know. I just haven't really, I haven't fully finished out that thought as to, you know, what does that mean with condo condo? Because <clears throat> even with condo condo, I don't necessarily want to have, you know, like these couches move to Florida or, you know. I mean, I have a lot of couches in this house. So, um, anyway, now I'm going to give Elwood his antibiotic. I'm going to eat a TV dinner. I'm going to have my antibiotic. Um, and uh, I'm feeling not so good. I'm feeling, to you know, warm and, and maybe go to bed. I don't know. I already signed the release, and um, it's just, this has all happened today, and it's like as if I'm just, oh, the fly. Um, the fly and the feminine product. I bought this. <sighs> well, forget about menopause or whatever, you know, just, it, it, just never mind, but, um, but uh, I was all distressed the last couple of days because I, I, I knew that I had some of the, I had brought some of those to Florida with me. I knew I still had some. And they just were nowhere to be found. And um, they were just, it was, well, there was a whole bunch of reasons. Um, and so, um, so anyway, I came back in the house after Elwood was roaming the streets, having gotten out of my back door of my bedroom that I had slept in last night, and I had used that bath. In fact, one of the reasons that I went back to my bedroom last night is because I kept using the bathroom, which I was thinking that I wasn't necessarily going to maybe make it to the bathroom, which was why I was looking for those products. And um, so having been in my bedroom last night, having been in that bathroom, when I'm talking about the bathroom, I'm talking about the toilet. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about losing something. I mean, the, my bathroom is, is, is big. I'm not talking about losing something, you know, in the general. I'm talking about losing something in here, in the toilet. And I come back from Elwood roaming the streets and I've gone to the Rite Aid and everything and I come back with a new supply and I look down and it's like that can't that cannot be happening I'm screaming that cannot be happening that that there's no way in human physics the law of physics have just been broken and that's what's gotten me onto this parallel reality thing that appeared out of nowhere, I crossed a dimension or whatever. And I, yes, I'm sounding stupid, but it's like, how can you miss something like that? I was looking for those for, well, I don't know, probably two, whatever amount of time, you know, 24, 48 hours or something, but certainly in the last, last night, for sure, I was looking for those and I was going to the bathroom I was the only one going to that bathroom. He was going to the guest room bathroom. Oh, it was only me going to that bathroom. How could I have... It's, I don't know. Yes, I'm, I'm going to say somehow I missed it, but there's no... There's actually no conceivably possible way that I could have missed it. So, I don't know. Um, and the fly. Um, well, the fly is explainable now. But um, the whole time I've lived in this house, I've thought, boy, this is really interesting. It's really nice. It's really cool that I don't have bugs in this house. I, I had, you know, from time to time I had, well, actually every summer, I had baby ants in the other house. And, you know, sometimes flies or sometimes a hornet or something or sometimes spiders. 
and sometimes even mice. And it's like, ever since I've been in this house, I, I was thinking, did they like put like a nuclear type level pesticide or something around this house? There are some, there is like one bumblebee that flies out around the, the deck. But um, other than that, it's like, it was just like no bugs in this house, just none. And, and there was sort of a kind of a metaphysical attachment to that where I got a psychic reading a year and a half ago or so. And she said something about fairies and, um, um, and fairies will keep bugs away. I had never even, I may not have even thought about the idea that I hadn't seen bugs in this house before that was mentioned and then after it was mentioned I just thought now I'm like searching for bugs and I'm saying oh and I was searching for bugs when the windows were tapping when it was tapping for like months and months and months and months and months and seasons changed and sun up and sun down and people witnessing it people even oh your windows tapping like you can make fun of it but you seem to be hearing it and so I was looking at the window sills to see if there were flies or something stuck between the middle window sills and was none, you know. And then after having seen a different psychic, suddenly the window stopped tapping. And um, well, anyway, so I was in the office, like, you know, just before starting this video, and I was signing off on the house that I wasn't going to buy, and then there was a fly flying around. I said, suddenly there's a fly. I've got feminine products showing up out of the blue, and then there's a fly. Okay, well, the fly is explainable now because somehow the door of my bedroom got opened in addition to being unlocked, and I guess, I guess you could assume that that's where our fly came in. Now, I'm gonna open the front door. Okay. Okay, the lawn guy was, he better, I need to check out these dates because I swear he's duplicating dates of his lawn service. I've been writing it in the memo column now, the dates. Well, okay, so that's just a lawn guy. That's all right. But um, I thought for a minute that it might have been a realtor because I still have a sign out there. You know, viewing, they're usually good about texting and stuff. Um, but anyway, I saw the note of no viewings. But anyway, so it wasn't a realtor trying to get in. It was a lawn guy trying to get paid. Uh, oh, and when I got in, I noticed the guy across the street was using a sprinkler, which I hadn't used yet, and I just put it on automatic, and I don't know, so for all I know, the sprinkler could have been running as I was getting my lawn mowed, probably not, but, and even over here, the house smells like food. There is some kind of Bad food, leftover food, something that I cannot track down. I, I just, I don't know. I just, I just don't know anymore. But there are some correlations to these seemingly weirdo, wacko kind of, kind of things. Um... Oh, then boyfriend said, <laughs> said, well, you know, one of your options about moving would be, you know, buy a house in the Boston area, and then he could move it, him, in. well, I don't want to get too personal, but um, it would be more, it would be a, another person besides him, um, and I said, why don't you buy a house? Well, you know. He has a completely different mindset on that kind of a thing. I mean, he just feels like he could just tuck himself into a little postage stamp and live on the cheap and spend money elsewhere. And, you know, he kind of said, he says, he didn't say it right then, but some other, he says, yeah, you're obviously very into real estate and very into houses and, and stuff. And I think the, and he, he no, he kind of like dropped that. And I said, whoa, what? Huh? And, um, but I think that actually, and then, on the one hand, it was, like, insulting. On the other hand, it was complimentary because it was like, oh, you want to live together now? You want to live together. Are you, you're, you're saying you want to, you want to move in together now, but you want me to buy the house. And, um, well, I think, actually, the reality of the situation is 
like, I mean, at, at any point in time, I could have gotten a roommate, you know, in charge. And so then we went on a walk later, and I brought that subject up again. And I said, so you mentioned, and he goes, oh, bah, 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 bah. and I said, well, I said, just out of curiosity, after you mentioned it, not that I think it's a good idea, but be, because of the extenuating circumstances, especially of it, um, um, I said, I did just look, you know, look at the prices there and, and uh, it, that was, um, but I said something like, um, yeah, they're kind of expensive. I said, but you know, if we ever wanted to talk about this in the future, I guess, you know, with you paying rent to somebody and he goes, oh yeah, yeah, I see what you, I see what you mean. Okay. So that was, that was it. It was kind of like, yeah, we're really not ready to talk about that. But what I think is that what it kind of amounts to is that, um, I think that, well, even with Mark, um, Mark got himself situated in a condo, but like there was no decoration. I mean, it was, you know, it was clean, it was tidy and everything, but he wasn't like living there per se. You know, he was occupying the space and there wasn't like, you know, in fact, one, at one point I said to him in our early dating, I said, oh, maybe I can help you decorate the place. Well, it was just like he was in a transition point in his life where he was looking for a woman to, you know, not just decorate his private surround, but, you know, ultimately to be giving up that entire, giving up that entire, um, now I'm noticing two pieces of tape on my blinds, way up there. Okay, how long have they been there? This just, I know this is no big deal. And I know you can say, all oh, right, for two years having lived here and having seen this house without a single item of furniture in it before the movers arrived and all that and me looking around, you could certainly say that I could have easily missed those two pieces of tape up there for two straight years could have never, ever noticed them. Well, then why did I notice this other thing of tape? I noticed that from day one. There's this, well, I don't even know if you can see it, but it's this little tiny little piece of tape over the refrigerator. I noticed that. I notice it from time to time regularly, thinking, oh, do I want to go grab the ladder or not? I've been noticing that piece of tape. Why didn't I notice those two strips of tape? Yeah, I know, mental breakdown, whatever. But, um, so, what I need to do is I need, I need to remember, I need to believe in the metaphysical concept, I mean, even if it's just a mind game, I need to believe in the idea of that I'm creating my own reality, including everything, including when boyfriends move further away from you, including when cats get sick, I'm creating my own reality, and who knows if in some part of my brain I want to create a reality in which I don't have cats. That's, I, you know, don't want to own up to that, but um, I certainly have felt like, oh, geez, you know, if I was in the old neighborhood which that had the woman that used to watch my cats, wouldn't that have been nicer? If Mark was still around to watch my cats, wouldn't that have been nicer? Isn't it, a, you know, yeah, it's kind of a problem being by myself and having cats, and oh, geez, does that kick off the universe to start responding to you? Like, you don't want cats, and you don't want to give away your cats again, you know that. So, this is the universe talking. You don't want to give away your cats again. You seem to have problems with having cats. Well, I guess there's only one way to get your law of attraction met. So... Now... If Elwood actually had had some sort of a, 
um, let's just say he had kidney stones. I mean, that would have probably been the best news. Well, I don't know if you can really date that back to his litter box problems that have taken place for a long time. But there was a moment today that I thought, well, I guess, in theory, something could be found today that could be fixed and cleared up and have him using the litter box again. And it would actually translate to me not being so interested in ceramic tile flooring in places like Florida. It's just a really weird circular kind of thinking. All right. Anyway, so I'm going to do pill, pill, food, no, pill, food, pill. Then I'm going to, um, oh, well, okay, yeah, that, that's that. But, um, so my plan currently, okay, I guess I said, I said that, is, um, okay, tomorrow, vet, and then probably mental breakdown after the vet. I mean, if the vet says that Elwood has cancer, then what? You know? Um, people do chemo and radiation with cats. I mean, I'll have to, you know, deal with that when I hear it. Um, I could also say I'm still planning my own reality. That day hasn't even happened yet. Tomorrow hasn't happened. Um, okay, anyway. Um, but then on Wednesday, um... I will go see the condo and get myself, that will automatically get me a realtor. Um, and in fact, that realtor was supposed to have contacted me with, um, if, if, if I don't hear from that realtor, because I just kind of pushed the button saying, yeah, I want to see that condo. condo. So if I don't hear from that realtor, I'm going to contact a realtor that I've used many times, like to sell the house right around that. I, 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 logically, I should just use her um anyway so I'll look at a few condos and who knows maybe Wednesday I'll be putting in an offer on a condo and then 20 days later closing on it um and then getting moved out of this house completely whether it's some stuff to the condo some stuff to a storage unit some stuff to New Jersey or Boston or whatever it's going some stuff's on Craigslist some stuff to the trash and um and then this house will just be on automatic pilot. It will eventually sell. Um, I can, you know, come visit it every once in a while if I feel like it, but the realtor is, would be basically keeping tabs on it at that point. And just simply get settled in my new place, my new area in Northern Virginia. Get to, you know, have the cats settled too. And because, um, yeah, I mean, I could stop the whole thing with the house, but I, I'm half packed now. I would have to unpack and everything. And, and I, I still want to be in that other area and, and stuff. So it won't be that painful. It won't be that long to just get myself set up in a condo with, with the cats set up there. And then their life as cats, <laughs> um, in fact, I will be, yes, I will be back somewhat in the same area where I can, I can actually probably use the same woman that I used before to watch my cats. At least it won't be in a community of old people. You know, I just don't want to, well, I don't even know my neighbors right now, but I feel like I don't really want to ask the old guy, you know, here or there or whatever to walk across the street and stuff and feed my cats. And so I've look for services, and I could, I could easily get a service to come to my house and all that. Um, but anyway, getting, getting moved into the other area, getting settled in the other area, I, I, the, I go back to the same stores, I would be doing the same, I, I would have, I think, I think that it would be a way to get myself grounded again. Um, you know, I would, I would have the ability to not get rid of any pieces of furniture that I don't want to get rid of. It'll either be in storage or in that condo. Storage, planning on Florida. It will get me back to that same neighborhood that I've been, had been in since 1988. 
Um, I think that will just have a certain aura. And it'll be cheap. I can do it with cash. Once I cash out of this house then, put the equity back in and all that kind of, I'd be in a good financial position. Um, and um, have that security, you know, have that aura of security, that umbrella again, even though Mark's names won't be on the utilities anymore. I think that's the whole complete story. An hour and five minutes worth. Okay. That is all. Pill, food, pill. Okay, bye-bye.